why does people ex expect us to do stuff like if we go to school i'm i'm expected to be oh he, he's smart and uh if he'll do well and blah 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 and just everyone just expects me to do stuff and yeah and i feel like that's just the society right now and this book sort of represents that pressure Hello fellow questers, it is I, Aaron the Book Quester, and today I got this great book, Beneath the Wheel, by Herman Hesse, himself the author of Demian, and well, let's get right on to it. Hans is what you commonly would call a genius. He has been born in this small, sleepy town, and he he's a genius, so his, his, well, his childhood is taken away from him. He studies and studies in the time where he could be swimming, running in the woods, or having fun. He gave up fishing, swimming, and his bunny, and his pets, and he just worked on studying. And everyone, everyone in school, his teachers, the principal even, personally taught Hans Latin, different languages, math, and so on. And Hans becomes really, really smart. Oopsies. And Hans is trying to study in order for this test. This he test that he could enter the seminary. A government where you, if, you, if you pass the test, the government pays for everything. And you can live in the seminary, in the dorms, and get taught by the finest teachers in Germany. Now, Hans wants to pass this test, and he works and works and doesn't sleep and doesn't play, and he studies, and finally, he goes on and passes the test. Now, after he passes the test, he starts to have a little fun after all. There's two months till school starts, and, you know, he passed the test, so now he can play a little bit. However, everyone else around him said, Hans, a lot of kids, they, their, their educational level, their intellectual level, goes plummeting down after they pass the test. We can't let that happen to you. You're gonna study. You're gonna study, and you're gonna study these languages, and you're also gonna learn math. You're gonna learn Hebrew. And Hans wasn't even given that his tiny summer break, and he was told to study again and again. And then he goes to the seminary. At first, he is a model student, striving to be fast. However, a friendship disturbs this. Now, why, why a friendship? Because Hans was always an outlier, this sort of person where you went, he's smart, and then you sort of moved on from him. You're not friends with him, he's, he's on a level than you. And you can't get close to him because, well, he doesn't really approach you either. He isn't very social, but he's a genius. That was Hans. And he didn't have any friends because of that. And when he becomes friends with Hela, a critiquing genius, who is a, who is a poet, a little bit of poet, and pretty much another genius, when he becomes friends with Hela, this all sort of crushes. Because... He's never had a friend, so having a friend was so magical. It was like a treasure that he, that he just, it was just lovely. And he had never felt anything like it. And nothing was more important than the friendship. And because of that, of course, his grades, everything that he had been working for before, started to slowly decrease. Then an incident occurs where Hela has to leave. He becomes expelled from the school because after an argument he had with the principal. On that term, I think Hale is a bit similar to me. Because I I can argue about something that I don't even believe in just to prove my point. Well, for, for six hours straight. Like, it's, it's not even funny. I can totally do that. And in that way, I think Hale is similar to me. However, he didn't really, I guess... I guess, to be fair, I sort of listen to the other person's arguments and try to understand it better, at the very least. But Hela doesn't do that, 
and because of that, Principal got really, really frustrated, and Haley's words were a bit too sharp, and he becomes kicked out of the school. Without Hayla, Hans becomes more and more unbalanced. He no longer studies as hard as he used to, and he is no longer the model student. Everyone thinks of him as some sort of weirdo or a person, a, a outlier, who, who was going to get expelled soon enough because he wasn't studying at all. And Hans holds on with, with knowledge that he already has for a couple more months, but he can't hold it. And finally, he, he gets this mental disease where he isn't in control of his own body. And his mind is so sick, his body is sicker than his mind, perhaps, or it's the other way around. And, he, and Hans, he returns to his hometown for a temporary break. But as everyone knew, this probably wouldn't be a temporary break. It would be a permanent leave. Because Hans, even if he did recover his health and came back to the school, would be so behind on the curriculum that he probably would never be able to catch up, no matter how hard he studies. And so Hans, it goes downhill. Back in the hometown, he goes around contemplating suicide. He even chooses a tree where he could hang his neck. And he thinks about how just releasing it would be to just die. And then... And then... After his body got a bit more better, his father says that he should take an apprenticeship at the blacksmith. And so he does. He does. And for a bit, it's alright. Then... After, he, after a night out with his apprentice buddies drinking beer, he's found the next day dead. A cold, dead body. Finally released from his suffering. Now, what does this uh, beneath the wheel, what does the wheel represent? What does this figurative wagon with the wheels represent? Well, I believe that the wagon represents what is expected of in society like i said at the start they expect you to work they expect you to go to cram school and summer break they expect you to 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 study and it's the expectations of the people and in order to be favorable to them you have to be in the wagon within what they think is good and if if you go outside the wagon those same people who, who gaze, gaze at you with perhaps respect or admiration will turn to hostile gazes of, of unfriendliness and of distaste. And those who do not, who is not suitable or who does not match with the views of the wagon, well, he'll be crushed beneath the wheel, never be able to come back out again. And that is what happened with the heart. Now there are people who grabs the perspective, the wagon of, of perspective, of, of expectedness, of prejudice of the people and turn it upside down. There are radical people like that. However, those people are one in a million and Hans, he is just an ordinary boy. A very smart ordinary boy, but he was just an ordinary kid. And his parents, his principal, his teachers in the seminary, they didn't understand him. He was just a little boy, but they crushed his soul underneath the wheel and made him ride a ride, a wagon that he did not belong in. He wasn't allowed to play, he just studied. And he studied until he broke his body. Then he studied and studied and made a friendship. And when his friend left, that broke his mind. And with being utterly crushed. Afterwards, he's found out dead. And I feel like, like e even in a place like Korea, like a lot of the moms are like, okay, my kid has to uh, go to school until 3 p.m. Uh, and he needs to, he or she needs to go to cram school for 
uh, until 9 p.m. and he can come back and eat something and quickly sleep, same over again and again and again and again until the end of the year. And a lot of moms think that. And I guess that's the Korean mom stereotype. I don't know, it could be Asian. I, I don't know about other Asian countries that much except Japan. And I guess that sort of thing, that sort of expectation almost, that pressure of society, that sort of thing, I guess, even now exists. And even now, some students can't handle the pressure and commit suicide and gets depressed or something like that. And this book, Herman Hersey's I don't know if I'm saying that name by, right, by the way. Beneath the wheel. I guess it represents those those souls, those poor souls that has been crushed by society's expectations. And that is why I believe that this book was such a good one. And in Demian, I guess... Okay, one final thing. The difference between Demian and Beneath the Wheel is that Demian... The, Demian actually... Not Demian. The main character actually finds himself. And he sort of finds peace as well at the end at the very least however in beneath the wheel it, it sort of slowly crushing the life out of young hans so it's sort of different so for demian it was like he was getting slowly crushed and then demian rescues him and beneath the wheel hans is being slowly crushed and crushed and crushed like like a piece of paper that's it cracked it again and again and again until the end of the book, he finally breaks and dies. And that's the difference between Demian and Hans. And like always, your book quester, are in the book quester. This was such a, I guess it was such a relatable book. Of course, I don't have it that badly. I mean, it's my choice to study and I, I quite like studying. And I have friends too, and I have fun too, but I still study. And I feel like finding the balance is important. However... It is still relatable, like, for a lot of Koreans out there and a lot of people out there. And it is a very nice book to read. And for people who's writing a book report on this... Yeah, well... <laughs> did I just give you the answer for your book report? Whatever!